Hey guys, welcome back. It's Josh with Happy Little Landscapes here once again. Uh, we just finished doing this cigar box today and I wanted to show you guys the video on how to do it. Uh, you can kind of expand this onto a bigger canvas if you have a bigger canvas available. Uh, all the techniques will work on canvas the same as they work on this wooden box here. So let me get my brushes out. I'll show you guys what brushes you're going to need to use to follow along and uh, what colors we have and we'll show you how to paint this sucker. Coming right up. Okay guys, so for this painting, uh, we're gonna wanna use five colors. It's only five colors for this whole thing, uh, as long as you don't count the liquid black, uh, liquid black and the liquid white, uh, we're gonna look at five colors. So basically we have our phthalo green, which you don't need a lot of. You can see how much I left over on my palette after I was done. Prussian blue, which is the darker color of the Bob Ross blues uh, in his set of paints. Midnight black and alizarin crimson. Again, you don't need a lot of crimson. Uh, as you can see, I've left too much. So you need a fair amount of titanium white. Again, not as much as I've left. Uh, I kind of didn't know what I was gonna do. I never know what I'm gonna do on these paintings, but, or how much I'm gonna need. And a lot of times I have to go back into the box and throw more on my palette. So in this case, we had leftover. But uh, as you can see, I've got the phthalo green mixed with white, the Prussian blue mixed with white, and a little bit of black there. And then the uh, white mixed with the alizarin crimson. Down here, we have a mixture of uh, blue, black, and crimson. That makes our purple color, which we'll use for the, the trees and the mountains and everything else. And I'll explain that later on in the video. Show you what we have to use here. Uh, we're going to be using the Bob Ross two inch brush here. His one inch brush. Same thing, just a little smaller, a little bit more manageable to use for inexperienced painters or for small things like this where you need to get into little tiny spots. Uh, we have the palette knife. You can use a larger one. You can use a uh, I don't even know what size this one is, the smaller one. I've even got one that's real little and it's got a little small edge on this side. So it doesn't matter what you use, as long as it's a flat edge palette knife, uh, it doesn't have to be metal, you can use the plastic ones. All we're trying to do is really use it to lay on our snow and get that one little line that's all the way in the back there. So any palette knife you have will work. Then we have uh, one fan brush here. This is a Master's Touch number four. And then this little teeny tiny fan brush, it says size zero on it. I'm sure it's like a micro fan brush. It just helps me with these little scenes that we do along the side when we have to make little trees, which is much difficult, more, much more difficult even with this smaller size fan brush. So that's it, five tools, five colors. Let's see if we can get it to spin around the right damn way. All right, <laughs> this isn't really working. This isn't working. Okay, five tools five colors, plus your liquid white and your liquid black to prime your box or your canvas. And uh, I'm gonna put my apron on and let's get rocking and rolling and I'll show you how to make this thing. See you guys soon. Welcome back everyone. Today we are uh, starting on a new cigar box or a jewelry box. Uh, it looks a little something like this right now. Uh, you can see it's Northern Lights inspired. We have two mountains, one back here, one over here, a couple trees in our foreground little tree on the edge of the uh, the bank out there. Uh, so I just wanted to show you guys how I sort of do these. Uh, I always start with the inside lid first. That way I can grip around the sides that I need to paint. We're going to be painting all the way around all four sides and then again a different scene up on the top. So I may not do a whole lot of uh, speaking while I'm trying to do this and not get paint all over myself, but uh, stick with me and we'll see how this turns into something different. Okay, so for this one, I think we'll start with some liquid white just to prime the bottom of the box. Don't want my arm to be in your guys' way. Without sanding or doing anything. You know, just realized we should probably do the sides before we do the top. Wipe it off. That way I've got somewhere to grip onto as I do the sides. So we'll do it over here, go along the bottom of our box, like so. And go around the back because we got too much paint. You want it to be very, <clears throat> excuse me, you want it to be very thin, thinly coated on here. You don't want to have a lot of paint globbed on there it's going to be hard to do our oil 
afterwards, but you do want to have it white and slick, and that way our oil will uh, slide over the top of this very easily. So we'll take the littlest bit of liquid black, which is just like liquid white in the name, liquid black, and we're just gonna coat the top half of our cigar box here. Or jewelry box, or passport holder, or you can put your spare keys in there, you can put documents in here, you can do whatever you wanna do. And just to mix the, the gray, uh, sorry, the black into the white, we'll just do this little swirl pattern and that kind of gives us this gray area where we can imagine that those are clouds off in the background. So we'll change hands here. Do this again, just mixing it, little circles, just mixing it so we have a little bit of white, a little bit of black, just like that night sky, and then our snow down the bottom. Now, since we did the uh, Aurora Borealis on the inside, we'll just continue with that along the outside. It only makes sense. So, in order to create our image that we have on the inside here, uh, I've taken a pile of titanium white mixed with the thalo green, uh, the Prussian blue, and then the alizarin crimson, and then we kind of just mixed all the rest of the colors in there into that pile. Then I have a pile for my mountains and my trees here, which is just a dark mixture of the blue and the, the midnight black and the alizarin crimson. Just take a, a little chunk out of all of them there and just mix it up. You just want it to look black and look real dark. If you see the red in there or the blue, just keep mixing it until it goes black and that's what we'll use for the base of our mountains and stuff. So now the these scenes on the side are very, very small. So you don't need a lot of paint at all to do even six paintings in a box like this. So what we'll do is we'll pull out our, our uh, Northern Lights colors here with the red, the green, and the blue. And what I've been doing is kind of getting a little chunk of red on the front of the knife, maybe a little bit of green on the rear of the knife. Don't know how well you can see that, but you have a little bit, a little chunk on each side. And then as we decide where our northern lights are going to come from, you can just roll with this in the shape that you want to make it. All right? You want to leave it a little bit globbed on there and make this kind of arch shape can come around just like that real real base shape there and we'll go in we'll get a little bit of blue we'll kind of do the same thing with, with the blue on a different line <clears throat> just kind of lay out a chunk of the little roll of paint just like Bob Ross does and then what we'll do is we'll get our two inch brush and we can either swipe down or up depending on the look that you want or how thick your paint is and we get our northern lights there right on the side of the box. And then we can take our brush strokes down here and just blend them right out. So we've got our northern lights there. We might as well do it on this side since we're doing two at a time for the video. We'll get a little of the phthalo green again. And why not, we'll just do one that looks like this. So we'll come along the side and make like a, like a wave almost that. Let's do another one as well. We'll put the blue, maybe the littlest touch of red with this one and just kind of make the same little shape. Don't worry if you take off some of your base color underneath. The more you swipe at it, the more it's going to mix and just very lightly we'll swipe down from the top and that gives us these real cool northern lights kind of Dancing shadows there, we'll call them. <clears throat> then we're going to go back to our side over here. We're going to drop our mountain in. Now with these boxes, you can decide how you want. If you want half your mountain on the corner and the other half on this corner, looks pretty cool. You can do different things on any side. It's a totally custom thing. So, But for now, we're going to take our mountainous color. And we'll go up like this. Cover over our lights. Sorry if you guys can't see there. Cover over a couple of our northern lights so they look like they're going behind the tip of the mountain. And we'll take our one inch brush, which we need to clean. Get rid of this. Clean off all that liquid black. Once the liquid black gets on the, the brush, it's very hard to uh, 
that'll just start turning all your colors dark. A lot of times with the liquid white, you can manage it, but with the liquid black, no dice. All right, dry off our brush or throw it on the floor, doesn't matter. Get nice and dry. And then we'll come back to our box here and we'll just take our mountain and just kind of pull it out into the shape of a mountain. Blend it down to where it's just very softly, just kind of floating on the edge of our box, just like that. All right, so now we have our mountain laid out. <clears throat> we can take and highlight that thing just with some pure liquid, uh, sorry, pure titanium white. And we'll decide, since our mountain's gonna wrap around our box, we'll decide that this side is gonna be the side the light is coming from. And just like Bob Ross does with his knife, just drop on a little chunk of color like that. A little bit of white. And then in order to make our shadowy color, we'll do the blue. And the more you use blue, the colder shadows you're gonna get on these mountains. Just kind of drop it in again. So we got one side white, one side blue. And then we might as well come over here on the other corner, right? Since we're already here. And just continue our mountain along. Maybe there's a hump or a hill. And you decide where you want, you know, what you want your mountain to look like. And do it. You pull the brush and it happens. That's how it works. Be mindful of your brush strokes though. The, however you move your brush tells the story of your mountain or your land, whatever you're moving there. And it's a very cool looking mountain. Now we can come, since this is the light side where our light is hitting our box, we can come continue on over. I don't know if you guys can see like that. Drop some in. And then we'll go over here and we'll pull the other way from this hill kind of back towards us and give us this little different little look and then every so often if you throw your brush all over the place every so often if you just give a little swipe up it'll look like trees way back off in the distance and then we'll come back in and we'll fix our fix our little snowy deal there Put a little bit of blue over on this snow because we're in the shadow on this side, right? Come over there like that. And just a little touch of blue is gonna pick up on people's eye and they'll, they'll notice what the heck you're doing over there. All right, so now what we'll do is just pop in a couple little far off evergreen trees. I don't know, what about over here? Just by popping down. And then we'll leave room to make one of them very pronounced, like a, you can tell it's a big old evergreen tree right there. And we use the same techniques as we do with our Bob Ross paintings. Like that. And we'll take these, we'll swipe up. Look like far off trees. And we can even take a little bit of our liquid white, pop it back in there like so and then for the tip of our tree here we don't want to put too much on there and the more you go down to the bottom of the, your tree the darker it should get so why don't we switch brushes from this big old fan brush here and we'll get something smaller something like this little fan brush right here and then we'll make another little tree over on this side. And why not? We can put in, let's do one kind of diagonal. Like that, a couple big guys next to him. Turn our brush around here. we got our little bit of trees and then we'll kind of we'll pipe in just some some long distant guys back there like so kind of fluff up the bottom got our tree and then we can just highlight it 
easy. Maybe we can get this whole thing done before I have to leave. All right, give me some liquid white over here on my palette with a little bit of red, blue, whatever. Doesn't matter. Does not matter, but I only really want to get it on the tips of my brush, not on the, not throughout the whole thing there. And that way I can come back on and just lightly highlight our tree over here. Just like so. They don't have to be real detailed because they're very small. So now that we've got those two, we can do our the other side and then the front, and then we can do the top. The top, I normally try to stick like a big old mountain on and just fill up all this space. It makes it look real neat. So why don't we go back to our liquid white here, cover over the bottom. Remember, it does not have to be very thick. You don't want a lot of paint on there. You almost want nothing at all. And that's even too much for that side, so I've got to use it on the front over here. Now you can choose to, you know, tape off your metal fittings, or if you've done it enough times, like I have, you can just rock and roll without worrying about painting over them. There we go. This. I like it. Got another side done. Now we'll flip over here, show you this side. Again, you don't have to use a lot of paint. And now that I've got the back side done, I don't want to touch it. I don't want to lay this side back down there. That's going to ruin all the stuff I did. Let's see if we can't just do the white bottom over here and then we'll be squared away on another two sides. And like I said, you just you do it until you like the way that it looks. I like mine to look pretty misty on the side. So it's you need a little bit of black, you get the gray, and then that gives us something to bounce our colors off of. And then over here, we've got this side done already. Don't want to touch the thing there. I'm gonna do this all before my timer goes off. Getting paint on my hat, itching the ear. Okay, now let's get rid of this liquid black again, since it's just gonna eat up all the colors that touch this brush. We have to decide whether or not we want to continue with our forest over on this corner. Or, yeah, we'll do forest. Why don't we do a mountain over here, and then we'll put the forest that continues along from this side. And then maybe another bit of mountain and more forest over here. We can do that. Okay, so I'm going to get my mountain ready on the side over here. I don't want to go too high up. Trying to leave myself a good amount of paint on the edges over here so when I swipe it up, it'll turn into real faraway trees. So I'm trying to leave like a good amount, like a good line over there. And then we can take this and swipe up, blend away the bottom. And then we have these really distant trees. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's there. And that's the main thing. Where's our light coming from? Our light is still, since we have light on this side, shadow on this side, that means this side's going to be in the shadow and the other side is going to be bright white. Put our other mountain in, big old sucker over here. Just with our palette knife, just let it float off into nothing. Maybe take our big brush and a couple far off distant trees and all it is is the dark paint that's bouncing off that gray before the black. That's why you gotta leave a little bit of misty area in there to uh, have a look at. It's all the same color, you're not gonna be able to see. All right, so we said we wanted our snow on this side. So 
So we'll get our blue and white mixture. Pop him down, go in there. Get a little bit of white over on this corner just so it's not all in the shadow. The only problem is, don't want too dang much of it hanging on the hanging on the box. Hanging off the edge anyway. You get caught on something. There we go, put our shadowy bits on this side. And then we'll come in with our bright white snow. Come in, do it as much as you want until you like the way it looks. So now mine's kind of got this shadowy dark side and then a lighter side to it as well. Wow, it's hurt my hand trying to pinch this thing and hold it up. All right, let's get some uh, Northern Lights colors in here. Just a couple little swipes. Don't want to do them all right next to each other, obviously. And then we'll come in, we'll just swipe up on these. Like that, you just need a little bit, don't need a lot. And then we'll continue on, since we have our forest on this side, we'll put our forest over here. There's my little brush. All with the same colors for the trees and the same colors for the mountains. And then we'll put like a another little real detailed, like I am a evergreen tree, notice me. Just like that. Right off in the side, kind of fill in the rest of this area. And then we'll even put this little baby one out there. Everybody's got to have a little friend, right? So we'll put this little, just a little guy. Bam, just like that. It's so hard to do this and hold it and do everything all at once. Okay, so we got that there. We got those. We can do this. Uh, take some of this shadowy blue over here. I didn't make it thick enough on the bottom. So just like that, I'm make it thick enough. And then we'll swipe it up. Looks good to me. We got our front side, then we can do the top. So we'll do our, our northerny lights. Which are all going from that way. So this one, why not we go this way? I want to do them all the same color though. I almost went back and just did like a red on a red, which is okay in some areas, I guess. They have the same colors or only one color. But um, purposes of this painting, I want them to have a few different colors to go along with. There we go. Just like that. So now we've got a little bit of red and green and blue in there. We'll even put a little bit more blue in this one. Just by redoing the same thing we just did over it again with the blue. And then we change the color. Okay, now all we have to do is finish our little forest, which we already have our dirty brush here full of the same color. And we'll just continue to make these little trees. And then we're going to make them, there we go, like that. Put one more guy out here, just because I like making these little guys. Let's see if I can't find a corner. Bingo. A couple little tree guys down there. Nice and dark, we can even put a little, just the smallest bit of highlight on them, like the littlest bit. Just the littlest bit. There we go. like that guys Pretty easy
this one. There we go. And we have our completed around the sides. Little cigar, see if I can get it in the light here. Little cigar box with all these different colors and trees and mountains. It's a great looking little box. Now we just have to do the top. How much time we got? How much time we got left? Oh, we can do the top. We can do the top. All right, so again, I get my liquid white. Now there's really nowhere to touch this box since every side of it is wet. So we just our liquid white, get in here. Try not to go over the sides. Try not to touch anything that you've already painted and get a big white spot on it. It's not gonna make you happy. Add a little bit more. And then our fingers are about to get dirty because there will be no place to touch this thing. Without it. Don't worry if you got stickers on your box or you know whatever. I don't I've taken the time to sand off uh, one box before. Took all this time, sanded it all off, did all the rest of the stuff, and guess what? The paint stuck just the same as it does on a non-sanded box. So I stopped wasting my time, and uh, now we just go right on the top. The texture of the paint, now we have ours nice and thick and texture D. Texture D, I coined that term in one of my other videos. It's not going to matter about the the stickers and the, the lumps. You're looking for that sort of textured feel when we do our stuff. So again, we're just gonna mix it up. Just want it to look dark and then gray. Just like so. So we've got our top half dark, bottom half white. Let's get rid of all this liquid black because it is so strong. It's so powerful, the liquid black. strong all right now these ones that are on the top of our box have to look the best because they're going to be like the showpiece you know the first thing people see when they look at the thing so what do we want to do with our lights why don't we pull out our colors again right pull this crap off onto a paper towel we've got our bit of green or a bit of white let's try to get a little more white than green on this one. Just on the edge of the knife, it can hang over, it can look, you know, you just want it on there. And then what we'll do is, why not? We'll just come up here right on the top of the dang thing and go around, flip our knife over and then come back underneath if you've got any paint left. If not, go back and get some more. Right down, we go up. You don't want to make it a straight line, right? They're not totally straight. They're straight-ish, but they're not totally straight. All right, so once we've done that one, before we get too much into it, you can see there's a whole huge blob of paint right here that got stuck, which is fine, but I don't want it in that spot. So we'll move it. We'll just go up and down very lightly. All we're trying to do is just disturb the paint so you get this you know misty looking streaky looking you can see all the bristles in your brush that's what you want it to look like because that's what the sky looks like when it comes down in the in the northern lights and what it is is the electrons that are coming from the sun that are bouncing off the earth's atmosphere at different times so you get these streaks of color that come down so now that we've got a nice, good-looking green one up there, we'll get a good-looking blue one up there now. Maybe a touch of red on the end. We'll come around here. I'm getting the red, I'm getting the green, I'm getting the blue, I'm getting the white, which is all good things. They can intermix. It can be whatever color you want them to be. It's not a definite thing. They come in all colors, all shapes, all sizes. Now, the more we go across, the more it's going to try to blend out the layer that we laid down before, so be careful. Don't want to do that. 
And you want to go straight up and down. You don't want to go side to side. That's not going to make anybody happy. Good amount of blue on that one. And you just decide where you want to put them, where you want, you know, what do you want, what color do you want it to be. And just decide. And it doesn't have to look like a, sh a perfect straight line. You can do whatever you want it to do. Just like that. This big old chunk of blue right there I didn't like. So we're going to just blend it away. And then we'll do our one thing over again real quick. Like that. A little bit of blue, a little bit of white. Just in the one area that we wiped off. Straight down, straight up. And then we got it done. I'm gonna do all these different things at once here, guys. I'm sorry for that. All right, we keep having to redo our things here because I don't like the way they look. And you gotta do it until you like the way they look. Because if you don't like it, who else is gonna like it? Not me. I barely like my own stuff. There we go. Now we'll just go from very bottom to the very top, like that, and then we gotta decide where our mountain's gonna live. I'm just gonna keep that on there. We'll just use, use up the same mountainous color here, and then we'll do this really jagged mountain. And we wanna come down and cover over some of our northern lights. You don't wanna see all of them there still. Big old monster bringing most of the way down. And then we'll just trail off on the side over here. Just by pushing as hard as I can push into the box. You can probably even hear it scraping as it goes off the side. Now I'm gonna get my one inch brush and I wanna take my mountain and just kinda soften him up, bring it down and just have it kind of cloudy at the bottom. Now you can see the green and the blues that we mixed in there with our um, with our northern lights are showing through to the mountain and it looks like a, like a reflection on the snow or whatever. You get this color in there. It's really cool. Now remember, brush strokes are everything. You want this side to go down, this side's going this way, so brush stroke it that way. Otherwise, it's just going to look all funny when you go to step back and look at it. All right, so in my mind, we have our light coming from over on the side. We're going to pull out our snow, just like Bob Ross does. This side up here. We have a little bit of um, red highlight in our snowy patches, which is fine. And you just pull it down and let whatever grips leave. We don't, you know, that can stay. Whatever stays on your knife, come back, you get a little bit more. And you pull it down. Pretty simple. Just work the knife into the shape that you want it to be. And then when you're satisfied with it, then you're done. You don't have to do anything else. Now in the blank spots that we left, we'll come in with the blue. And we'll put our bluey, shadowy snow color in there. Might want to add a little bit of black to it, and just dull it down a bit. Come over here. It's difficult to try to stay out of your guys' way. And still paint it so it looks real. And it's not always a flat surface, so you gotta just gotta work with it. And we can even put a little bit more black. And we'll go over here and make this one like a little bit darker. There we go. So now we've got our lights coming from the right, and everywhere that there's light, it's casting a shadow of our darker color. You can even use 
use some of this. There we go. Every so often, it just it looks cool if you just take the littlest bit of black, just pure midnight black, and drop a, a little bit of it in your shadowy areas. You don't want to overdo it. It starts looking cool, and then you're like, oh, I could, I could do some more of this, and then all of a sudden, it's all darker, and now you got to re-highlight everything. Okay, so now I want to take. four minutes to finish. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to swipe up in the direction of my painting, right? However you laid it down with the knife is the direction that you want to swipe up with this. And it's just going to make everything look nice and soft far away in the distance. And then we can even take it and just kind of mess it up. Just gives it this misty feel. All right, now, <clears throat> What we'll do is, for this one, yeah, why not? What I'm doing now is just making a, a line so I can tell myself there's a bit of, a bit of water in here. And I want my horizon line in the back to be straight. Doesn't matter the size of the painting if your perspective is off and your horizon isn't straight, and it doesn't matter what you put on there, it's just gonna look odd. Okay, that's actually a little even too blue. Why don't we take a little bit of the midnight black as well and put some of that in our water since it is a nighttime painting, right? Water is not just going to be bright blue at night, it's going to have a little color to it. There we go, right over this old sticker, doesn't matter. Okay, now the reason I wanted a flat line in the back of that mountain is so that I could take the smallest amount of liquid white on my knife and just make us a little water line back there just by pulling straight to the side. And when it's real far away, you don't want your line to be humongous. You just want someone to notice it just way off there in the distance. If it gets too big, it starts making your mountains look closer than you want them to look. If you have too many ripples, it looks much closer than you want. So we want this guy back there. Just a little white line is all you need. If you ever mess it up, and you don't like it, or you want to look like there's some trees, or there's something back there, or you can pull it straight down into the water, swipe it away again. Kind of look cool. Put a little color back at the bottom of these things and make it look like trees. Swipe it away, and then we'll come back with the knife again, just a littlest bit. It's much easier on a canvas when it's at the right angle. It's much harder doing it like this. Okay, then we'll do, since we don't have much time left, we'll mix up our trees again, which is just blue and black. Every so often you can put red in there, the crimson, it doesn't matter. Like so. some really red trees. I put a lot of crimson in there apparently. And just mix it up and then come in with our fan brush. I think this is a size. There we go. And then we'll come in up here. We want to make it taller than our mountain. And if it's close to us, it's going to look taller than our mountain is. down, just like we always do, and make our trees, there we go, darker down the bottom, and we got our two trees, 
I like it. Let's even do one more since we only have a couple minutes. Always put more than I plan. Plan on just doing a couple. It starts looking good, and I always do more. It messes me up sometimes. There we go. A couple trees in the front. You really gotta hurry and highlight those suckers. bit of pink with our highlight snow and just come in and every so often give a little tap it you don't want to go all the way down to the bottom you go all the way down to the bottom you're gonna be upset with yourself you got to make yourself stop at some point because you want them to be dark down there you want it to be dark at the bottom of your painting bottom of this one anyway It starts looking so cool you want to do it all the way down but don't trust me don't do it you have a whole white tree in this angle from where our lights coming from this is not gonna work so now I'm gonna take our knife here scrape in a little trunk every so often Because the box is wood, you'll get this, if you scrape off enough, you'll get the wood to shine through. And that looks really cool. Little tree trunk action. But you don't want it throughout your whole thing, remember. You don't want it to look the same. Think. Can't even see if you can see it. Whoop! There we go. Trying to slide away on me. So yeah, that's it. All done. Looking good. Really wet. Really glossy. All the way around. And on the inside as well. Great looking box. I sell these for just about fifty dollars on my Etsy store. So get over there and uh, buy this one before someone else does. We'll see you guys later.